I said yes. So oh, sick. Jake can get himself oh, in here okay. whenever he's ready if he's up for it. So we're doing kind of a special pop-up live, definitely very unplanned, but it is definitely a necessary thing to discuss, especially with more episodes coming this week, um, including today. It's going to be a four-episode week, the way that we're going now, because we're doing one tonight. We got Wednesday's regular show. Thursday night, we're streaming during the first round, and then Friday night, we're streaming during the second and third rounds. So it's going to be a jam-packed week for Jake and I, and then Simon and Bryant as well. If... Uh, if Bryant has the opportunity to get in here, he's going to jump in. Um, Jake, I think, might be joining as well. Um, but we're basically here to talk about the Aaron Rodgers trade. So I'm just going to read out the terms. Basically, it's the Packers and Jets swap first-round picks. The Packers get a second-rounder. Uh, and then the Jets get a fourth. The Packers get a fifth. And then the Jets get Aaron Rodgers, and the Packers get a second next year that turns into a first-round pick if Aaron Rodgers plays more than 65% of snaps, which, barring an injury, seems pretty much um, a guarantee, I would say, unless the Jets somehow start 0-7 and, and the Jets are like, hey, let's see what we have in Zach Wilson. So, Simon, what are your what are your initial thoughts on the Aaron Rodgers trade. I think <clears throat> from what I've read so far, the other important thing too is neither team is going to absorb more money than like that wasn't a condition of the terms either. So like what was expected to be a straight up trade. So the Packers take about 8 million more cap this year. And then the Jets will take about $15 million on their cap space this year too. So I, th I think that's important too. But I, I think I think this is a great job by Goodigans. I honestly I love that he kept the conditions of the trade because there was speculation for the last uh, you know month or so that the conditions would be whether or not Rodgers plays more than one year. But the Packers absolve any worries about that this uh, next year by not really caring based on his play next year. Uh, the amount of snaps that he plays. So I, I love that. Uh, this is, pro I wish we could, you probably have the graphic and stuff that we did when we first started talking about it of where we thought Rodgers would go and how much do you think we'd get? And <clears throat> I almost nailed it. I, I set a first and like a conditional second. So I was, I was pretty close, I think. I don't know if you have it on hand, but I, I was pretty close on what we'd get back. Um, I do like oh. that we moved, up two spots in the first so we have the 13th pick we gave the jets our 15th pick this year i like that a lot too and then we gave up our one of our fifth round picks this year and we get a six back so we have a pick in every round right i, I love that a lot um but I, I think this was a master class I, I feel like the jets almost folded a little bit in a way i agree I, I think they started getting scared by some of the rumors, maybe. I think there's a strong possibility of that. Uh, I've seen stuff from the Titans. I've seen stuff from the 49ers. And I think um, – I don't know who called who, but someone called yesterday or whatever, and then they just got it done. And I, I think this was a brilliant – this was a brilliant play by Gutekunst to get it done. Um, I think I think they haven't finalized it yet, but it's basically done. That's Diamond so what do you – what do you think, Bryant? Man, I'm sorry. I just came out of an interview. Absolutely crushed it, by the way. Hell oh, yeah. I'm not nice. Good job. So, <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'd be very shocked if I did anyway. But, of course, that happens, you know, when I'm, I'm not able to look at my phone for three hours. But I thought we we did incredibly well with that. I mean, unless they're, you know, and the conditional is fair because I guess he, you know, doesn't play 65%. But this is Aaron Rodgers. He plays through a lot of stuff like he did last I'll be shocked if that doesn't turn into a first. And and then the pick swap, everyone is – a lot of people might be sleeping on a pick swap, but think about – that jumps us up in front of New England who's been tied to a quarterback a little bit. But you're talking about we might not pick at 13. I'm telling you right now, don't be surprised if we trade back and we roll, we roll into 2024 with three first-round draft picks. Um, I, it would not shock me at all. Say JSN goes early and we still like the line depth or something there, I could see us trading back from 13. So and then to secure their first second round pick, that gives us. We've all talked about over our draft review how strong the second round is. We have two picks there, 
and a very strong possibility about picking up another one in the second round if we should if we do trade back from the 13th overall. So I thought we, I think we absolutely crushed it. What do you think, Tyler? Any excessive thoughts? <clears throat> I so I, I went back and I looked at it and. Simon said Aaron Rodgers and a fourth for a first, a second, and a third. Um, oh. Bryant said for number 13 and a second. Um, I said a first, a second, and a fourth. Uh, Jake said two firsts, two seconds, and a fourth swap. And then Bryant also had a 2025 20, conditional second rounder. That goes to a first if Aaron Rodgers plays in 2024. Interesting. We're pretty close. I think you brought up a really good point when you brought up the um when you brought up the fact that um we don't have to worry about 2025 anymore. That it's just hey, all we have to do is see how many snaps he plays 2024 or 2023, I mean, and then we get the 2024 pick. And then we're done. Like, we don't have to worry about 2024 at all as far as Aaron Rodgers is concerned because we'll have our pick. Uh, we'll, we'll know if it's a second or a first uh, by the end of 2023 and possibly even before that. So, um, I mean, it's pretty much going to be set. I mean, I'm, like Brian said, I think it's pretty much a done deal that it's going to be um, a, a first-round pick next season as well. So all in all, considering, you know, considering 170 for 207 a wash, um, it's basically a first and a second, and that's going to be it, or or first and um, a first next year and a second this year. But um, did you guys both watch Brian Gutekunst's, um press conference, Brian? I'm not sure if you would have had a ch chance, no. but um, I I had it on the background. Simon has um, watched it. Yeah. I, I mean, I definitely was, like, messaging people and stuff the whole time, so I caught a little bit. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, you say it's a first and a second, too, but I will say that that to jump up from, like, 15 to 13 right there, I bet if we were trying to do that, we would probably have to throw, like, a fourth rounder at them, like, in an actual draft or something like that. So that, people <clears> might, <throat> like, oh, it's only one extra pick. But moving in front of New England there could be very key. Like, if, if a quarterback falls and someone wants to get that quarterback and they have any fear that New England might take a quarterback there, they might be willing to trade up to us and give us more, you know. So I, I, I really like that pick swap. I, I, that's a big move by us. Because then a lot of times they're like, we all love JSN, right? And a lot of the mocks you do, who takes JSN? The New England Patriots. Because they need a, a wide receiver. So just that pick swap, for one, gives us yes. a possibility yep. of trading out of it. Are two really to get the the player we want? So I think I think it's huge. So yeah, you brought up the point that I was thinking of that, you know, the Packers don't have to worry about either the Jets sniping an offensive lineman that they wanted, or it's being a wide receiver that the Packers wanted. So that that is important. Um, and basically all the Packers had to do was move back around later in the draft, which as we discussed on Friday and we've discussed in previous shows, we think that there's tons of value there. So we're really not, I'm not, I'm not mad about moving back at all. Um, but Gutekunst did say that he wanted this done before the draft uh, and it should be technically finalized sometime, um, assume everything goes the way that they're planning it. Um, is there... Does the Packers moving from 15 to 13 in your guys' eyes, does that change the draft strategy at all? I think it affords them the opportunity to trade um, if the person that they are hoping isn't there drops. I don't <clears> – I mean, we have the ammunition now. If they really want to – like if Houston's really trying to move off that second and we're just absolutely in love with Will Anderson or something. I mean, that gives you the opportunity. I, I, I think it would cost too much. I, I would not recommend that because I feel like we, we're in a position to get a lot of – players to help Jordan Love and the rest of the team but I think we're in a lot better position to jump up into maybe like eighth or ninth position if we want to jump the Eagles or somebody or Tennessee that might need a wide receiver if we want to jump up into you know the late tens or whatever you know eight or nine or whatever to grab somebody we want 
now we're not going to have to spend quite as much. So I, I think it gives us a lot of flexibility. I think, I, honestly, I don't know that we pick at 13. I, I, if I was a betting person, I'm saying it's like 60-40 that we actually even pick at 13. I think there's a chance we trade up if the, if we think we're going to miss out on somebody. And I think there's a chance we trade down if the value's there, especially if a quarterback is dropping. Like I've heard, I've seen something, a report earlier that, you know, C.J. Stroud isn't guaranteed to go in the top seven. Well, what if he falls to 13 and all of a sudden you have a team that really wants to trade up to get him? They're going to send us some picks, you know what I mean? So, anyways, gentlemen, I got I got to jump or whatever, but I want to jump on for a minute. I'll be running some mock drafts tonight just with the new picks, so I'll send you those. So. Later. I'll let you later, bro. Sounds good. Thanks for hopping on for a minute. So, I Okay, so I think I'm just going to read in some comments that. here quick. Oh, you're good. Go ahead. Yeah. Let me read some comments real quick. I got yeah, 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 for sure. People commenting. Michael said the compensation is right in line with what he's expected, honestly. Uh, now to yeah. trade down from 13 to say 24 with Jacksonville. We did that exact thing actually on Friday night in our first mock draft that we did. We traded down to 24 and we got their second round pick, which was 52, 56, something like that. Um, get Jacksonville second. Exactly. Lots of value in the second round. Take Washington at 24. I don't think you have to take Washington at 24. I think what we did was we took Darnell Wright at 24 mm -hmm. and we took Washington yep. at 45. Um, Greg said, please discuss the additional picks Green Bay got after 42. We got pick 207 too. Uh, Greg, yes, we did get number 207, but we did also send back pick number 170. Um, Greg said pick 13 or 15 to me is immaterial because I want Goody to trade down twice into round one to pile up draft capital. We need numbers. I mean, I'm not up to that at all. Greg said JSN is an average road runner, but only okay speed. Maybe his speed improves and his hammy improves. As far as JSN is concerned, which I would be fine with taking him at 13. Um, yep. As far as JSN is concerned, um, I think he's got the highest floor out of all the wide receivers. Um he said, per wide receiver Steve Smith, the only three-level wide receiver in the draft is Addison with Flowers number two. See, and I wasn't really that impressed with Addison. I actually had Addison as my number yeah. four wide receiver, and I had Flowers as my number two. I'm actually really excited for Zay Flowers. Um, and if the Packers were to trade back, say, into the late first round, I'd be super excited for the Packers to take Zay Flowers with their late first-round pick. And you can use Romeo Dobbs as an outside wide receiver or an inside wide receiver keep Christian Watson on the outside and, and have Romeo Dobbs to move around anywhere with Zay Flowers as your new slot man. So Jake, what's up? I see you, uh, see you're in here now. What are your, what are your initial thoughts? <laughs> well, I, uh, I took a nap after I got home from work. I had some free time and I wake up and the trade between the Packers and Jets is official and Rogers is officially a Jet. And I'll tell you what, my first initial thought was uh, a little bit of sadness again because I was like, oh, man, i got to revisit this again. <laughs> revisit all the Aaron Rodgers greatness that was on the Green Bay Packers. But to be honest with you, we got a, we got a haul. I, I love everything that we got. I think uh, Goop was playing uh, uh, checkers, uh, chess, not checkers. And uh, we we flopped first. We, we flipped first rounders. Um, we picked up. A uh, second rounder that could be a first rounder. We picked up a, another second rounder and a sixth round pick. I don't know how you can't be happy with that. Um, I didn't get to hear any of your thoughts. Uh, Simon, were, were you a big fan of, of what we got? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that was my – I I like – it's about in line with what I thought we'd get. I, I think what surprised me most was the condition. Like I was talking to Tyler, I was saying the condition – where we don't have to worry about whether or not Rodgers plays next year is huge. I think that's what makes makes or breaks this trade as a good or bad trade for Gutekinds. And I, I think yep. he did a phenomenal job of working that into um, the Jets. And I, I think like more or less bending their arm a little bit on it. Did you, uh, did you see also this, this tweet from Tom uh, Pisario? It'll be Hello, a day to, yeah. Where he talked about, uh, He'll sign a revisited contract with the Packers to facilitate the trade and help Green Bay's cap. Interesting. I hmm. so, so is he restructuring his contract, pushing more money in the future? I I don't really understand why I, we would do that though. 
I don't know. I mean, we're going to be getting more money. So also on top of the picks, we're also going, going to be That's so getting... interesting considering... I, I think that's very interesting considering we're basically absolving ourselves from Rogers contract. From my understanding, uh, from what I've read and I was talking to Tyler about this is everything that like n- the contract isn't getting touched on either side. Like no one's going to owe more money. So for us to push more money in the future, like I don't know what we would do with the cap this year and then push like we're 24 mil. If um, we give Jordan love his fifth year, option and we extend Gary we're still like in the in the red next year so that's really interesting that he would the Packers would do that yeah I'm I'm not really sure why in in my opinion I think the cap that they are gaining from this is going to be used for a Rashawn Gary to lock him up um you know oh you want to oh yeah you oh that would make sense yeah you you take a little bit more on this year than you yep that might that would make sense lock lock up Rashawn Gary um then you see here's the thing that people don't understand and like it's a it's a hard pill to swallow is yes we are going to be doing a tiny tiny rebuild i think maybe this year we're going to be finding some things out and depending on how jordan love is he obviously can accelerate that rebuild right if if jordan love shows potential and we fill some holes with this draft that's coming up. Draft week, let's go, baby! I know I'm Simon so was super excited yeah, about it, I'm but so, I'm so excited. <laughs> if we can fill, if we can fill a couple positions of need with the draft right away, Jordan Love looks like the Jordan Love that Brian Goot thinks that he's got. That accelerates this rebuild. I think this year, maybe a little tiny bit of next year, and then the Packers are right back to where we're all used to, right? Yeah, we're gonna Me, need you, those Tyler. We're all born into the Packers winning. We don't yeah. know what it's like to lose for a long period of time. Yeah, sure. We take we take a year off, but then we're like, ah, well, we got Aaron Rodgers, or oh, we got Brett Favre. Oh, we're right back into it, right? Well, it could happen with a Jordan Love, where yeah. all of a sudden he accelerates this thing, and boom, we're right back to the Green Bay Packers that we all know and love, right? So, this is definitely interesting, and that is going to turn into a first round pick. So the Packers have two first round picks basically next year. So that's very exciting. <laughs> yeah, oh, that is that is an account. exciting part of it. Um, I was going to say, Greg Greg has been commenting. Smith said there was only two wide receivers that square up after catches. He noted flowers, breaks ankles like Tyreek Hill. He said if their targets are not available at 13, then trade down. Goody did very well in the trade. Uh, Goody said, I was unaware that his, his draft. Steve Smith was only 166 pounds at just under 5'10". Then he developed into a clone of Sterling Sharp, Beefy, and Monstrous. <clears throat> Taylor said, finally, relief. Uh, this is a good Monday. So that's what Taylor feels. Uh-huh. Um, it's interesting hearing some of the other things that Brian Gutekun said uh, relating to the draft, to trades, and to Jordan Love. Uh, as far as the draft, he wanted the deal done before the draft. Uh, he wanted compensation in this year's draft. So we do get an extra second round pick. So the Packers draft positions are now as follows. 13, 42, 45, 78, 116, 149, 207, 232, 235, 242, and 256. That's 11 picks this year, plus whatever they do with undrafted players. I think the the first undrafted player that I'm going to look for the Packers to pick up is going to be Sean Clifford. Uh, Goody did say they're going to look to go in with at least three quarterbacks into training camp. Yeah, uh, he didn't say that that was going to be something they addressed specifically at the draft, but he did say that would be something they addressed between sometime between the draft and training camp. Um, he said whether they go in with three or four isn't super important, but he did say that they would be looking to go in with at least three. Um, as far as drafting, he did say that best player available is the best practice. When it comes to drafting, he said it does happen where like the thoughts creep into your mind about positions of need, but that's not how he drafts. Uh, Greg's excited that we have 11 picks. I definitely am too. Um, oh, yeah. As far as Jordan Love is concerned, Brian Gutekun said that the reasons they wanted to get Jordan Love on the field were that they've seen steady growth from him over the last three years. Mm-hmm. And he made strong impressions practicing with the first team offense while Rodgers was hurt a lot this year. So that's something that we don't get to see because that's behind closed doors when they're practicing. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. is Jordan Love in practice with the first team offense. So it's not like, you know, when he and Watson and Dobbs and Jones went to California, that's not the first time that Jordan Love was throwing them a ball. Right. Like we had preseason with Romeo Dobbs a little bit, but Aaron Jones didn't play. He's gotten work with these guys, you know, not a ton, but he's gotten some work in with these guys. So it's not like this is going to be the first time that Aaron Jones is throwing the ball to any of these, or sorry, that um, Jordan Love. Um, Jordan Love. That Jordan Love. Yeah. <laughs> I got to get used to saying the name. Um, that Jordan yeah, Love. It's, you know, it's going to be, guys. it's going to be. I take a little bit. <laughs> you know, He's only gonna be the third starting quarterback that I've had announced in my lifetime. So <laughs> yeah, that's that's um, wild, man. Oh my god. So the impressions wow. of of seeing him practicing with the ones that's that's a really interesting aspect of it that I don't think it's discussed as much because we we're expecting that Aaron Rodgers was working with the ones all last year, but he wasn't because he was hurt. So Jordan Love did get some rapport in there already. So those guys have seen him. And then as far as um, trading Brian Gutekunst, and this this made me feel like, whoa, he's got some he's got some nuts, was Brian Gutekunst was asked if he was prepared in 2018 to be in the moment where he is now, where last year he traded Devontae Adams, and this year he traded Aaron Rodgers, and like no hesitation. He's like, yep, absolutely. He's like, yep, I knew I would be in a position like this because it's the NFL. So he yep. talked about it, you know, it being, you know, there's, unpredictability but he knew in 2018 that he was going to be in a position where he eventually might be in the position that he found himself in the last two seasons yeah um and I'm like, when he said that i'm like damn okay goody uh <laughs> but i'm all for it uh michael said uh wide receiver mingo or yoshi Voss, i really like one or both with their speed this draft i think all four of us are fans of both of those guys yeah Ooh, um, we, yeah, we drafted one. Mingo and Yoshi Voss both in some of the mock drafts that we did on Friday night. And we're definitely fans of both of those guys. Yeah. Um, Greg said, now we and Jets fans can all breathe a sigh of relief, collect our thoughts and eagerly look forward to the draft. I'm really excited, but covering my eyes, watching like a scary horror flick. <laughs> hey, Greg, lucky you. We will be streaming not only during the first round of this year, but we are also going to stream during the second and third round. So you can watch with us. And if you're in a, in a place where you're nervous, we can talk you down. We'll be here for you. Um, <laughs> we had a lot of fun doing it last year, and we're, uh, we'll be doing it again this year. So looking forward to, to adding to that. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else you guys have thoughts on, whether it be about Jordan Love or Gutekunst or trades over the last two seasons? Simon, go ahead. Got anything, buddy? Um, I, I am a little bit surprised that it didn't happen on draft day, especially with the first round pick swap, because I thought maybe that would play a factor if like they didn't like a guy at 13 and maybe we did, then that would be something that they would throw on the table as well. Or maybe sweeten up the deal of the trade or something. So I'm a little bit surprised by that. I'm also interested to go on Jeff's Twitter and see what they think about the trade. <clears throat> they, I'll tell you this, just from experience of, of, New York fans, I guarantee they're all over there. Oh my god, we 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 stole Aaron Rodgers from the Packers. Like, no, you didn't, dude. You're basically giving us a second rounder and a first rounder for they, a guy that's going to play for you. A year thought they were going to give us a third, and that was going to be it. That's yeah, because like, they were doing the same thing that a lot of Packer fans they just want to be done with it. They're like, oh, just give them the old Brett Favre trade. Give mm -hmm. give us a fourth rounder. It's like, no, that's not even the same situation. <laughs> I think I would – I'll argue this until the day I die. Rodgers right now is better than when we traded Favre to the Jets. Like, Rodgers right now is better than when Favre <laughs> was on the Jets. Well, also, just like yeah. as weird as the situation is between Green Bay and Rodgers, it's not as bad of a situation as when Rodgers – or I'm oh, sorry, with Favre. Sorry. Yeah, when Favre – because he was basically going to go to the Vikings and they're like – the Packers were like, fuck no, we're trading you to the Jets. Just give us anything. Yeah, it's, wow. I thought the only thing I had to worry about today was was Giannis playing. <laughs> God, that's good news too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not saying yeah, this is bad news. news. It's a little bit of bittersweet. I won't lie. I don't want to trade the best player in our franchise yeah. history. I don't care what you think. In my opinion, he's the he's the best player in our franchise's history. But you know, it was going to happen eventually. Yep. And lucky enough for us, like let's just count our blessings. We have a 6'4 first-round talent quarterback waiting in the wings. 
Nothing. Dude, absolutely nothing wrong with that. Quarterback in, in Packers history. Yeah. That's he's got, crazy. He's got, he's got a rocket arm. He's got good mobility. Um, obviously, he's yeah. he's putting in the work with his teammates to show that he cares, that he wants to be successful. So, I mean, we could really be in a really shitty situation. We really could. I mean, the, the, the Lions got Jared Goff yeah. for, for Matthew Stafford. I mean, think about mm-hmm. that. They got lucky that the Rams sucked and they have a really high draft pick this year. But yeah, other than that, they got Jared Goff for, for the best quarterback they've ever seen in their lives. So it could be worse. So Greg said, I'll definitely watch your guys' draft podcast because I'm really tired of ESPN talking heads over the picks on the board. So annoying. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll try to have it entertaining too. And like we've done the research on this. So like we think, you know. You know, we think this, and it's up to those those who watch our show if, if they agree or not. But we think, you know, we've done a lot of the research, and we think we know what we're talking about when it comes to this. You know, yeah. I'm not claiming to be an expert or anything, but, like, I did spend a lot of time doing draft research. Um, Chris asked – these are these are really good questions, by the way, Chris. Chris asked, what are the Packers trying to do by having swapped the first-round pick? Do they go offense on 13th overall? I heard tight end Dalton Kincaid is a name to watch. And where do they go with both second round picks? So to, I'm just going to answer these one at a time. So first, what are the Packers trying to do by having swapped the first round pick? We kind of touched on that a little bit. Uh, They jumped the Patriots and they swap with the Jets. The Jets would be a team to keep an eye on. Say, say Paris Johnson fell to 13. Like the Jets are going to be like sprinting to lock that pick in and would take him off the board for the Packers at 15. And the Patriots are in need of a lot of positions, wide receiver being one of them. So we now jump the Patriots to look at wide receivers, should that be what the Packers want to do. Answering your question of do they go offense on the 13th pick, I say yes. I think JSN is the first-round pick, and if not, trade back. Honestly, JSN is really the only guy that I'm wanting to draft at 13, assuming that Paris Johnson doesn't fall that far. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not sold on Skaronsky. Um, I don't want to draft a, a, a tight end or a safety at 13. Um, and I'm and the Packers really don't need corners. So like while they could be in a position to draft a guy like Devin Witherspoon, it just doesn't strike a need for the Packers. So that's where I believe they could trade back. So for me, it's basically JSN, Paris Johnson, if he falls, or trade back is how I'm looking at the first round. Uh, as far as Dalton Kincaid, I unfortunately, as much as I like him, I don't think the Packers are going to be in a position to draft him unless they trade back. Um, similarly to how I feel about Zay Flowers, I think both of those guys are going to be late first round picks, and unless the Packers trade back, they're really not going to be in that position. I don't think either of those guys fall to pick 42. But to answer your last question, with the second round picks, I do think either 42 or 45, I would almost guarantee is going to be a tight end, whether they get lucky and Kincaid falls there or one of those picks is going to be Darnell Washington. I, I, After I saw that we got a second rounder, I was like, well, we got Darnell Washington and whoever wide receiver they want. That That's how my brain worked. When, when they got the oh. second rounder, I was like, Darnell Washington, JSN, throw in a defensive player in the second round. I was one. just going to say, if we get like Mazzy Smith, Throw it in there. They're, they're, I think Goot is either or, going to take JSN or he's moving back. That is exactly where his mind is. That's where all of our minds are. That's yep. where I think he's going as well. I would I would bet that eight, 80% chance that he moves back. I think we'll still be picking in the 20s. 80%? Oh, wow, that high. I, I still think we're going to be picking in the 20s. I think he's looking to get as much bites at the apple, as Tyler likes that saying. I think he's looking yeah. to get that in this draft as many as he can to limit this rebuild. I really, I really think that he believes in love. I think he's going to try to load up on as many players as he can. Yeah. And a lot of people, because this draft's going to be weird. You know, last year's draft, all of a sudden we're like, what the hell? What the hell? What is going on? What is going on? Why is happening? Why is this guy getting picked eighth? You know, we're just going to be freaking out. I think a lot of teams are going to be moving up. That 13 pick is a weird spot. So, I think we're going to move back in that 24 to 27 range, and we're going to be be taking a, a wide receiver or tight end at that pick. I mean, you're in a position, too, at 13 where, say, Will Levis falls to 13. And, you know, there's you know there's some teams getting antsy. Say the Raiders want to trade back into the first round. 
to grab Will Levis. Or, you know, right. I mean, uh, I'm trying to think of another another team that would be in that position where they're, you know, they're kind of antsy seeing Will Levis fall that might want to jump ahead of the Patriots and the Jets to be in that position to, to grab a guy like that. Um, Chad said, let's be honest, Rodgers ran the offense. I'm curious and excited to see what the offense looks now that LaFleur can run the offense the way he wants to with a mobile QB. I think I said this on Friday night, but I'll just say it again. The Brian Gutekunz and Matt LaFleur era actually starts now. It didn't start in 2018 when Gutekunz and LaFleur took over. Um, or I should say in 2019 when LaFleur took over, 18 when Gutekunz took over. It really starts now. Like this is this is now where Brian Gutekunz is starting to build his team, not any more, you know, takeover from what Ted Thompson had left behind for him. Yeah. So that's really what I think with that. Um, Taylor said, maybe get Lucas Van Ness ahead of New England. Uh, Michael asked, what tight end do we now target? He still likes Washington best, Kincaid second, Musgrave, Laporta. We did this draft on Friday night. It was, I think, our second draft where we drafted Darnell Washington in the second round. And then in the, I want to say it was the fifth round, we took Luke Schoonmaker. That pairing of tight ends would be my dream scenario. Um I, I like uh, I like Washington and Laporta too. If if yeah, we took back to back like second, third round tight ends, I I like the versatility of both of them. Like Dar- Darnell Washington can get out and block, and Laporta is a really good receiving uh, tight end. So just having those two different kinds of tight ends because Packers haven't drafted a ton of tight ends in recent years to where we know what they like. Yeah. So <clears throat> it'll be really interesting to see how those guys like match up. <clears throat> uh, Michael, another name at tight end to keep an eye on is going to be Josh Wiley mm-hmm. from Cincinnati. Um, we know Matt LaFleur is a guy who likes Cincinnati guys. Um, so keep an eye on that. Obviously they drafted Josiah DeGuara in 2020. So Josh Wiley in like the, like I would say like the fifth, sixth, seventh round. Yeah. Definitely a name to keep an eye on as far as tight ends go. Uh, Bill said, I've been team Goody from the start of this. So I'm ecstatic with what we got. Our quote-unquote mini rebuild just got a lot of help. I'm grateful for everything Aaron did for us, oh, but yeah. I'm happy that the front office looked to the future of the franchise instead of hanging on to a QB that is realistically aging out of the NFL. Yep. I mean, I don't know that it goes so far as to saying that he's aging out of the NFL, but his age definitely is a factor. Um, is definitely a factor with this scenario, especially I mean, with like Jordan Love's not getting any younger either. Like he's only 24, and he's still right. younger than Hendon Hooker, but. It's a scenario where they can't, like, like Gudikin said it in his uh, press conference today, that they can't keep sitting him and expect, you know, to to have it go well. Right. Um, Father time is undefeated, right? So, yep. right. It, right. And this was going to happen eventually. So, if it has to happen now, then let it happen now. <laughs> Taylor said our second draft was chef's kiss. <laughs> Uh, Chris said he agrees that JSN would be awesome. Goody loves to draft those Georgia boys. So Darnell Washington makes sense. That's true. It would be fun to have one offensively. Um, Greg said QB and defense. Yeah, we're not drafting a QB anytime early. Uh, Taylor said get wild with Wiley. Definitely on board with that. Uh, All right. And then Greg's commenting on the YouTube side. And he said, Mike Wall, Apine Skaronsky has the best pad level footwork and techniques in the draft options between left tackle or left guard. He noted Washington is a two year, although oh, the, the, the tackle Washington is a two year project yep. to address head droop, footwork, and inconsistent pad level. Um, he liked right tackle Jones, that's Broderick Jones, and versus his vaunted teammate Paris Johnson from OSU. He called Jones a road grader, but needs improvement in pass blocking. I don't love the thought of drafting Broderick Jones in the first round. Um, definitely more of a late first round, early second round guy, in my opinion. But I mean, you know, some of these, some of these things, um, I don't know if any of them change your, your guys' thoughts. I mean, Simon, do you have any thoughts on the questions that Michael put in here before on, um, you know, what do we do with the first round or any of Chris's questions, you know, what to do in the first round, what to do at tight end and what to do with the second rounders? So in, in Goody's press conference, he did mention <clears throat> trading down to I, I think there's a very realistic possibility that them taking the 13th pick just gives them more futuristic ammo if they decide to trade down. 
So I, I, I think this is a very – I'm with Jake. It's It's got to be up there in the percentages of it happening. Oh. Um, <clears throat> yeah, my bad, Greg. That's Dewan Jones. Not Broderick Jones is from Georgia as well. Yep. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, I'm glad we got the chance to talk through some of these things, get some of the thoughts out there. Um, definitely appreciate everybody commenting along and asking questions. Uh, definitely some great questions uh, from the comments section. Um, Greg said Dewan would be good in round three. It's definitely going to make the draft super interesting. And as we yeah. know, the first round, there's a lot of time in between picks. So we'll have a lot more time Thursday night uh, during in between picks to discuss more of the implications of this trade once it's finalized. But we just wanted to hop on and get some of the initial thoughts out get some of the initial implications of what some of these things could be with this trade mm-hmm. and yeah, just to answer some more questions to go with, with all the draft prep that we've done. So appreciate that everybody that commented along, asked questions and Jake and I will be back on Wednesday. And then we're also going to be live Thursday and Friday this week. So get a little bonus episode today and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and uh, going to be a, a long full Wisco fanatics packed week. That is for sure. Uh, Greg, yes, appreciate the kind words on there. Um, it, it's exciting time. It's an exciting time. Yes, sir. So we're ready. Hopefully the, the Bucks and the Brewers can get some wins tonight. And we're ready to go on Wednesday with Jake and I. And then Thursday and Friday, Bryant and Simon will be with us to watch the, the first three rounds of the draft. So if you if you enjoyed our, our little pop-up episode, definitely hang out with us on Thursday night and Friday night because it'll be – It'll be fun times for sure, and we can talk through the picks and whatever else happens. Craziness. Yeah. Bucks and six. All righty. See you guys later this week.